Hi everyone, I'm John Mitchell and in today's video we're going to look at a theory known as Porter's Generic Strategies which was developed by Michael Porter. So Porter's Generic Strategies outlines the ways in which a business can gain a competitive advantage in their marketplace. And he states that for businesses to actually gain a competitive advantage, they need to implement one of what he calls generic strategies. The generic strategies that we need to know as part of our study design are the lower cost strategy, and you may see that also called the cost advantage or cost leadership. And then there's the differentiation strategy. So let's firstly take a look at the lower cost strategy. The lower cost strategy is where a business is able to gain a competitive advantage by being the low cost producer in its industry. Now you need to think about this from a business perspective and think about how the business can actually lower their costs. Some ways that businesses can lower their costs could be by operating on a larger scale and achieving economies of scale so that each good or service that is produced, it's actually produced for less. It could be that the business can improve their efficiencies by implementing things like technology into certain areas of their business, for example, or by implementing lean management uh, principles. Or it could be that the business simply looks to cut costs in as many areas of the value chain as possible as a way to be the low cost producer in their industry. So the key point here is that they are looking to be the cost leader and be the leader in their industry at lowering their costs. Now, when you go into a shop and purchase something, it, I can't imagine you would ask a person at the counter what the costs of the business are. So the question is, how does lowering costs actually lead to a competitive advantage? Well, by becoming the cost leader, the business can gain a competitive advantage in two main ways. Firstly, it could be that the business decides to lower its prices significantly and become attractive to the price conscious customer. So those customers that really shop around for the best price, or it could be that the business decides to sell their good or service at or near the industry average and therefore increase their profit margins. And that means they'll make more money than their competitors for each sale that they make. And that extra profit can be used in other areas of the business to gain a competitive advantage. Let's take a look at some of the benefits of the lower cost strategy. One that clearly applies is that the business is able to gain a competitive advantage, which means it's able to become a leader in its industry. And because of this competitive advantage, the business has a greater ability to increase their market share because they can attract more customers away from its competitors. And because the business has lower costs than any of its rivals, it can withstand any kind of price war longer than its competitors. So if a competitor decides to lower their prices, well, the business that's implemented the lower cost strategy can lower their prices if they need to, to compete on price, and they can withstand that because they've got lower costs than any of their other competitors, and therefore they can withstand any kind of price war. Now, one of the drawbacks of implementing the lower cost strategy is that if the business continues to lower costs in the operations area of the business, it has the potential to impact the quality, which can make it difficult to then actually attract customers. Now, it's likely that any good or service sold by a business implementing this lower cost strategy will be sort of a no frills type product without all the bells and whistles, a very basic type product. However, it's important that the business doesn't ignore quality or features that actually attract customers. So if they're looking to lower costs and they remove that quality or remove those features, uh, it can negatively impact on the quality and the value of the product and therefore they lose their competitive advantage. Another drawback is that if the business does lower their prices, they'll need to increase the sales volume significantly in order to make the same amount of profit. And again, if the prices are lowered, which is likely, some customers may perceive the lowered price as a lower quality. And finally, this strategy, it can be difficult to maintain over the longer term because other businesses or the competitors will constantly look to lower their costs also. Now Porter's next generic strategy is known as the differentiation strategy, which is where the business aims to gain a competitive advantage by being unique in some way that's valued by their customers. As a result of differentiating themselves, and having this unique offering, customers are attracted to the business or to the products that they're selling. And that uniqueness, the business is rewarded by being able to charge a premium price for their products. So no longer do they really have to necessarily compete heavily on price. And again, this strategy is about the business being the best in its industry so that it's a leader and gains a competitive advantage. However, with the differentiation strategy, there's lots of different ways that businesses are able to be unique and compete on that differentiation. So some of the ways that businesses can be unique and differentiate themselves could be having high quality materials that improve the quality of the product and help them stand out. 
It could be having legal protections such as patents, trademarks, copyrights and the like, just like Amazon do with their technologies within their development of drone deliveries. It could be unique marketing that helps the business stand out and attract customers or relationships even. So it could be unique relationships with suppliers giving access to quality materials that competitors don't have or it could be a relationship with a celebrity or a sporting celebrity like Louis Vuitton has with Naomi Osaka. It could be that the unique innovations that a business creates, and I've got the example there of SpaceX and their reusable rockets, or it could even be having high quality training that improves the performance of employees. Another way is to have unique distribution channels, just again like Amazon Prime do with their being able to deliver within an hour in some locations in the United States. So there's a whole range of ways that businesses can actually be unique, and these are just some examples, and actually implement the differentiation strategies. And if we look at the benefits of the differentiation strategy, again, the business is able to gain a competitive advantage. Obviously, that's what this theory is about, so we can use that for either of the strategies. But it also develops brand loyalty, which enables the business to make more money through repeat purchases and having customers for life. They can get those real those customers coming back again and again and again, just like Apple does and businesses like that. And the business is able to charge a premium price for their product, which makes the business less susceptible to those price wars. So it also enables the business to increase their prices with minimal impact on the number of sales, therefore increasing their profit margins. However, on the negative side, being unique is often more expensive and adding new features, having high quality materials, acquiring those legal protections in patents or investing in areas that differentiate the business all cost money and will likely increase the expenses of the business. Because the business is able to charge a premium price for what they are offering their customers, it can also narrow the market as some people can simply not, may not be able to afford that premium price. And finally, we've got there, if the unique features are not protected in some way, then it can be easily copied by their competitors and take that, that competitive advantage that they had away. Now, Porter stated that it's important for a business to implement only one strategy and not try to implement both. We need to remember that the idea is that the business is a leader in their industry at the chosen strategy. And Porter states that if a business tries to implement both strategies, they risk being mediocre at both rather than being the best at one of the strategies. And he calls that being stuck in the middle. However, as we've mentioned throughout, each strategy cannot completely ignore the other. So when lowering costs, the business needs to be careful about removing any unique features or elements that are desirable and add customer add value to the customer. And similarly with the differentiation strategy is able to, yes, they're able to charge a premium price. However, if the increased costs of being unique are so high that they offset the premium price, then they will lose their competitive advantage because people simply won't be able to afford the product. So while it's important to focus on one strategy, they can't completely ignore the other. Now, before we finish up, we're going to look at a typical process a business can use when deciding which generic strategy they should implement. So Porter states that it's important for managers to firstly analyze the industry they are in in order to help determine where they can take advantage, where their business can take advantage and actually gain that competitive advantage. So managers are able to do this by reviewing what he calls the five competitive forces. So these forces are simply the five key factors that make up the competition within their industry. So if we quickly look at each of these forces, and we don't have to go in depth with these, we're just looking at, well, this is really just looking at the industry, and he does name these five forces. But the first one is supplier power, which looks at how powerful the suppliers are and their ability to drive costs up for the business. So obviously, if there's only one or two key suppliers, then they have lots of power and they can drive costs up easily. Also, buyer power, it looks at how powerful the buyers of the product are to drive prices down. And then the next one is competitive rivalry, which is, a, which is a way to look at all the competitors in the industry and see what the strengths are to see where they, the business can actually take advantage and fit into that industry. So it could be that there's lots of lower cost competitors and there, you know not many differentiation competitors. And therefore, if the business has something unique, they might go, well, we'll fit in with that differentiation strategy. Then the next is threat of substitution, looking at how easy it is for customers to find a substitute for the business's product. So for example, if a customer can easily find a similar product to what the, their, um, the business is actually selling, it may make it difficult to implement that differentiation strategy successfully because if you're gonna charge a premium price and the customer can simply find that 
product elsewhere um, or a really similar product elsewhere, then it's going to be difficult to do that. And finally, the threat of new entry looks at how easy it is for a competitor to actually enter the market. Now, you don't really know to need to know those forces in depth. However, it just gives a clear picture of what managers or owners should be looking at when they're analyzing their industry to help determine which generic strategy is best for them to implement. So once that industry has been analyzed with the competitive forces, the next step in terms of determining which strategy to implement would be for managers to look at what the strengths of their actual business is. It could be that they have a unique feature that the competitors don't have, or they have high quality employees or access to supplies that will give them significant discounts, but looking at what their actual strengths are. The next step would be to actually compare these strengths with the industry analysis to see where they would best fit fit in with that industry and what they can take advantage of. And once they've done gathered all that information, they can make an informed decision about the best generic strategy for them. So that's a typical process that managers can use to determine which of Porter's generic strategies they should implement. So just to recap, Porter's generic strategies theory outlines how businesses can gain a competitive advantage. There's the lower cost strategy, which is where the business aims to be the low cost producer in its industry. And there's the differentiation strategy where the business aims to be unique in some way that is valued by customers. And it's important that a business looks to implement only one of those strategies because they wanna be the best at that particular strategy. If they implement both, Porter says that they risk being stuck in the middle. So that's it for Porter's generic strategies theory. For questions and activities, then come on over to teachingbubble.com.